Hey there, I'm Aloman and welcome to Atom RPG. Atom RPG is a turn-based RPG, unsurprisingly, <laughs> set in the crumbling ruins of the Soviet Union 19 years after the Cold War turned hot and the old world was destroyed in nuclear fire. We play as a cadet in Atom, a secret organization which operates in the remains of the post-apocalyptic USSR, just trying to survive in a new and dangerous world. So, well, without any ado, let's begin. <laughs> so, this game is, well, relatively based off other similar turn-based strategy games such as Fallout 1 and 2, if you guys have ever played anything like that. So it's got a relatively similar system, which I'm just going to explain a little bit now. So, first of all, there's characteristics, which are kind of like special, except I guess that's... Sedipal, um, which obviously are the main characteristics that you are going to be using for the game. After which there are skills, which obviously another obvious choice, and distinctions, which function much like perks based off the normal game. In addition to this, uh, obviously you can choose your character, but there's relatively limited character creation, like actual customization of them, what you get to do in the game from what I've seen. Um, for the stats, it looks like health is relatively a small amount, like it's not in the hundreds, but I'm not sure whether the scales up levels just quite yet. Obviously there's dodging, action points of what you're going to be using to use all of your attacks and actually movement as well. Um, obviously you've got carry weight in there, resistance to toxins and rads, obviously, and sequence which functions as an initiative. So, I've just finished putting my character together. So I really do love this portrait, I'm not going to lie, so I've decided to go with that one. Funny that he's wearing a hat on his picture, but oh well. Uh, he's going to be Igor. Um, so I've started off by picking a what I thought would be a decent build for the game. So I want to go shooty and I want to go talky. So I picked the Diplomat, which uh, gives uh, extra, obviously, uh, speech craft and personality, but reduces combat skills. And to offset that, I've chosen to shoot in Gallery Fan, which does pretty much the opposite, except it reduces its endurance. So I've decided when it comes to characteristics, I'm going to go a little bit low on the whole strength and endurance side of things and focus a bit more on, obviously, personality and intelligence and that, because attention deals with range combat. Uh, look, um, I don't tend to put too much into in games. So I'm actually tempted to take a point out of that, but I think I'll leave that as, as it is for now. Um, I put one point in dex. The way it seems to work is action points go up every two, it seems. So just getting that extra one could be pretty useful, but don't think I'm getting an extra shot off with that. But obviously intellect helps with the skill points per level, as well as uh, some dialogue options, which attention does as well. So I'm hoping this is going to be something where I can get sort of to nitty gritty when it comes to the actual world building side of things. Now, in terms of skill points, obviously you only get 20 of those, so I'll put 5 into rifle, was it rifles, and yeah, rifles and shotguns. I have put 5 into speechcraft, and then technology and tinkering, because I'm expecting to do quite a bit of that. So, let's, I guess, get into things then. So, clothes kit. Oh, so it's literally just the clothes you start with. Uh... Sleeveless shirt and army pants, I'm not feeling. My army's a little bit too obvious, I guess, when trying to blend in. Um, yeah, I think I'd go traveler. Oh, uh, so regardless of who you are, whilst you can edit this, you start off as a uh, person working for Atom. It seems to be universal, there doesn't seem to be anything else that you can change about that. Um, in terms of difficulties, well, it's pretty much more experience points, less encounters. And then the survival difficulty, which obviously has permadeath, which is definitely not what I'm looking forward to right now. So I'm just going to start off in normal mode. So let's begin. Let's see what we got. Atom, a branch of the Soviet army created long before the war, caused by the imperialist conquerors. Our mission does not end in gathering pre-war technology and reviving our Soviet motherland. We also strive to reach the pre-war quality of life for all. To realize those goals, we often send search expeditions into the wasteland. Not long ago, one of such expeditions, led by General Morozov, lost all contact with the base. Our human resources are limited. Therefore, the standard procedure is to send out but a few agents to investigate this problem. You are one of the chosen for this mission. General Morozov's troops had an important quest to locate, control, and study a secret bunker. Bunker 317. 
According to our data, it is located near the village of Otradnoya. To successfully complete your mission, we recommend you to contact our agent in the city of Krasnos Nemunye, codename Fidel. He's hiding in plain sight as a barkeep in the outskirts of the city. So apart from physical aid, he can offer you informational support as well. You will learn the password needed to contact our agent from the envelope. Destroy it upon reading. And remember, your mission is to gather intelligence on the disappearance of Morozov and his troops. No heroics. The wastes are a dangerous place. Good luck, cadet. And let there be Atom. Ah, yes, Atom. So the religion's going strong in Fallout and this game as well, it seems. I like my jumper. Right, so I've got what? A small camp, obviously an AK, a backpack, and a tent. Uh oh. What's that rustling sound? Oh, lovely. Can I reach for my gun? No. Nope. From an even shadows that are dancing around your campfire emerges a well-built man in his thirties, dressed in a musty khaki uniform. Military type? Well, well, well. What do we have here? I hope I'm not bothering you, comrade. The man stops before you and rubs his hands as if to warm himself, or to show you a formidable brass knuckle on his left hand. Oh, so just at sightsee then, I guess. You look like a tourist, man. Nice tents, clothes in good condition. Without holes or tears, and so much other stuff. The man whistles, sizing up your equipment. Oh god. Someone just started, I'm already getting robbed. It must be hard to carry such a weight on your shoulders. Actually, my strength is below average, so he's probably right. The stranger's face breaks into an ominous smile. I mean, me and my pals could help you. Well, not for free, of course, but for a very manageable price. What say you? I only noticed four human figures hidden in the dark of the night. Oh, they were hidden. <laughs> if you still have some doubts about what is transpiring, now it's becoming painfully clear. You're about to get robbed. Well, I hadn't quite figured that out yet, but let's see. Well, obviously I'm going to go speechcraft. I'm not entirely sure about that. Listen, I agree that sharing is caring, but all I have is the bare minimum for survival. Be a human being. Leave me alone. The man smiles and winks at you. Ooh, success. Maybe I'm... Don't sweat it, rookie. We won't hurt you. Just wanted to browse through your stuff for a sec. Who knows? Maybe we won't take everything. Ah, goddammit. And you can lie down and rest whilst we're at it. What do you mean? Uh-oh, combat. Okay. Oh. Never mind. Take the loot, man. We have a good catch tonight. Well. Maybe they left something. I wonder whether that speech check actually did anything then. Okay, so the oh, camera seems a bit sensitive. Alright, I'm just gonna have a look around the UI and then I'll get back to you in a sec. Okay, so I've had a brief look around. It seems it's relatively similar to most of the games out there. So you've obviously got your weapon down there with the AP it takes to use, so as I expected, I'm probably not gonna get an extra shot out of that extra one AP. Um, if you right click on it or click on this, it changes what you're going to do with it, whether it's aimed or not. I guess that also switches between semi-automatic fire modes and automatic fire modes on guns as well. And this button seems to change which weapon it's going to be. I have no idea what that little button is, the one with the Soviet Union symbol, but apparently I could choose that kick and I'll punch you right now, either of which I can't imagine a good soon as my gun is missing and I'm not really geared for this kind of stuff. So, uh, inventory, obviously down here, there are our status effects. And this is also where the crafting window is, which actually seems pretty nice with what they've got. It'd be interesting making a zip gun or a pipe rifle, but obviously I'd need some equipment first. And as you can see, I'm a little bit light on some stuff. Up here is the, obviously just the menu, and then we've got the character screen with the hunger debuff. And also our status, which obviously the missions. A map, which has a indeterminate scale, I guess. And also you can seemingly rest. I hear there is something with base building in this game, so I expect I can go back to base and rest or eat or whatever I want to do. But for now, let's just have a look around. So WASD is just the normal controls. Ah, I was left with a canteen and nothing else. 
That's kind of concerning. Let's see if there's anything in my tent. There is not. I wonder whether they would have left me the canteen if I hadn't have done that check. Not entirely sure. Let's see. Okay, so that's the exit. Don't want to go there just yet. Hopefully there's something I can loot around here somewhere. Presumably here. I must admit, I'm getting quite a nice feeling from this game. It reminds me similar. It reminds me quite a bit of Dead State. I don't know whether any of you guys played that, but similar in little composition, I guess. Um, as well as the graphic styles and things as well. These are just all bricks. I need a brick to craft some stuff anyway, so I guess this is kind of useful. I'm fairly sure I could take a house part and do the same thing. I wonder how much they weigh, actually. 3.45 kilograms each, and my cap is 40 kilograms. That's not a lot. Oh, hello. A couple of boxes. Let's see. A spoon. Oh. Lovely, I can eat what food I don't have. And a locked chest. Can I do anything? Okay, can't seem to activate a way to open the chest, so I assume it just goes off like the way stealth does, because there isn't a button for stealth either, where it's just active all the time and just applied against the object, which means I do not have the lock picking for this, unfortunately, but maybe we can come back to that. There's a brick and a log, I guess? The rest of this place seems pretty sparse, though. Oh no, wait, there's another brick there. Might as well hoard these. Maybe I can build a house! Right, so let's actually see, because I can craft some stuff, I think, now. I need at least a weapon. Let's craft a ship. So what do I need for that? A brick. Oops. A brick. Ah, I need tape as well. Oh, that's annoying. Can't I just snap the spoon end off? <laughs> Anything would be better than this. Ah, well, if we get attacked by some guy, I can scoop his eyes out, I guess. Let's get going, then. I don't think there's anything else. Oh. Well, I'm not going to get mugged again, am I? Okay. A treadner. terrible with Cyrillic. If any of you guys actually know how to pronounce that, it would be much appreciated if you could post that in comments, because I'm probably going to butcher a lot of the words. I tend to night pretty fast with me crossing that bridge. Okay, there's a guy there. What's on the outside? Far Ooh, radioactive stuff. I guess I probably shouldn't walk in that right now. Any, let's just check. Right, so who's this guy? Before you stands a strongly built man around 30. He's wearing a weathered military jacket and holds a large gun in his hands. On further inspection, he seems like an affable guy that would probably welcome a conversation with a random stranger. I can read a lot from an expression. He absently chews a blade of grass, but upon seeing you, he livens up. Hey there, comrade. Uh, and uh, hello to you too. The man coughs and spits out the blade of grass and removes his hands from his rifle, letting it hang there by its handmade leather belt. Nice to meet you. My name is Yen. May I ask what build brings you to your village? What does that do? Oh, just allows me to check. Barter? Apparently not. I guess I'm looking for someone. Someone who lives here? Not really. Okay then, how may I help you out? Well, I wanted to ask a few questions. Fine, I'll try to answer. Was there a troop of military types in your village lately? Funny you should ask. A squad of troops came through the village not long ago. Can't say they were military though, but they had some serious looking dudes. Good weapons on them, and their attitude was pretty militant. They were even wearing uniforms of some sorts. Some serious guys, I tell you. Real serious. And I wonder whether he's talking about the guys I'm following, or the guys who just mugged me, because I guess both of them would kind of be military. Oh, well, I guess I'm part of the 
group as well, and I'm wearing a freaking jumper, so maybe not. They brought some water, rested for a day near the walls, and moved on. I got the chatting with the youngest guy among them. We're on an expedition to the... Ah, so that is the group then. Probably looking for some pre-war tech, or what remains of it. God help them. They seem normal enough. God help them. I wonder whether it means bandits or mutants. would be pretty interesting. Can you point me in the direction of the drones? Jan takes your map, and after looking at it for a while, draws a small black cross in one spot. After looking at the map again, he returns it to you. Here it is, not too far away. Thanks, can I ask another question? I can ask the same thing again. Um, tell me about your village. What do you want to know? Where can I buy some weapons and who sells them? Just a village gun dealer, a trader, Yashin. If you want to know my opinion, he's a nice guy, but he asks a lot for his words. A real goddamn capitalist. Oh, sounds like communism didn't survive the fall of the USSR then. Not really surprising, I guess. On the other hand, he pays some hefty taxes and helps the guard around the town with their weapons. Shouldn't visit him even if you don't need a gun. He only moved here recently. Being a city person, he'd love to chat with a stranger such as yourself. His shop is just outside the gates to the left. It's completely possible. <laughs> Maybe some more questions? Why can I buy some drugs? Maybe you should play Konstantin Albertovich Mikian a visit. He's our doctor. You can simply call him Konstantin or Mikian, whatever suits your fancy. He's an educated person, respected by all the people. He's been practicing medicine since before the war, so he can patch you up if needs be. Uh, do let me know if the accent's a little bit too much, guys. <laughs> uh, nice to know. Can I ask about something else? What do you want to know? How is life? A village is great. It was founded right after the war. Comrade Kovalev, our head, built it around an oak tree with the first settlers. Now that oak tree stands in the middle of the settlement. It's our main attraction somewhat. Or should I say mascot? Interesting. You would not believe me, but I was told people ran all around the waste after the bombs fell. They were looking for food and water, but everything was around was simply dust and burnt earth. But here they saw this oak, and the water running nearby was clear. Pretty strange man, if you ask me. And smiles, but suddenly a smile disappears, turns to a power. The man looks like he just ate a whole lemon. <laughs> but life itself, it's rotten. Honestly rotten. It's drought season now, we are being raided all the time. Bandits come here each month demanding money. We tried fighting them, we tried making peace with them, nothing works. They're stronger than we are. Nobody could help me? Sent a man once into the big city, crossed nine many. So you could hire us a few mercenaries. With all the money we had, you could only get seven men. They soon arrived looking serious and tough with their fancy guns, proud of themselves. Doesn't sound like it's gonna turn out well. I wish I could tell you that they fought the bandits and they stopped harassing us. I wish I could tell you that. But the wasteland is no fairy tale world. The bandits killed all seven of our men and demanded we pay them even more the following month. They said we needed to pay more because we obviously had the money for mercenaries. Well, I guess they have a point, a little. Do you have any work available? Some work can always be found. For one, our tech guy disappeared somewhere. Stivalev was his surname. He loves a drink from time to time, and sometimes goes on a bender. But it's not like him to be gone for so long. The last time we saw him, he was pretty drunk, bragging about becoming a millionaire real soon, and now he's just gone. <laughs> Maybe he earned his million and ran out. Maybe so, but where'd he get the million rubles? Something shady about this whole situation. So they still use rubles then. I was half expecting a barter system, to be honest. Jan shrugs his shoulders and vigilantly stares into the distance before turning back on you. Back to you, not back on me. Sorry, Jan, I'm painting you to be an aggressive dude here. Eh? Anyway, a real handy man would be welcome here nowadays. Maybe you can point me to some other jobs. Well, you might try asking around the tavern. There's a brother and a sister in charge. Vasnaya, Vasya and Katya Radchenko. Also, some of the villagers might be looking for manual laborers. I don't know who, though. I see. Another question? Um, heard any good rumors lately? One passerby told me that somewhere in the waste is this old abandoned Boy Scout camp, but it's not entirely abandoned. He told me that all the Boy Scouts there that were there before the war are still there, but now they're feral and they worship the devil in their rituals. <laughs> that sound normal to me. But... Nine. It's been 19 years since the bombs dropped, so they must be quite old then. He also told me that it's possible they're not Boy Scouts at all, just some monstrous creatures that took on the forms of the kids, trying to mimic us humans. Well, that's slightly more disturbing, but more plausible, I guess. 
Yes, me, that's a load, a huge load of bull. Clearly, I'm not the man to be asked about rumors. <laughs> you should chat with the people in the village. Maybe they'll know. I see. See you later. If I had the time, I'll visit you again. Bye. Wait, feel free to come back here whenever. It could be pretty boring just standing here. I wonder whether we're just gonna have more dialogues in that case. Can I talk to the doggy? Apparently not. What is that? Brick. Is there anything around here? Big sp yeah. I hate insects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I assume these are the mercenaries? And that one is... I have no idea what that says. Must well, be rather disrespectful. I wonder whether you could dig those up. That must be the pool he's talking about as well, because that is definitely not clear water. But probably a good deterrent. Right, let's have a look. Oh, looks like I missed something. Never to open your door to strangers. Perhaps in that case, there is still a radio station out there. Pretty interesting. Assume that three dog isn't there, unfortunately. Boy, you stand an old man in an old, weathered but clean jacket. He looks around 60, but very well preserved for someone who lives in the waste. Uh, I guess. Seems possible that his real age is closer to 70. His strict face is adorned with a short mustache. I wish I could read people like that. I'm terrible with picking people's ages. What do you need, comrade? Can I ask a few questions? I'm very busy. Please speak with someone in the village. Turns away from you, letting you know the conversation is over. Some pretty fancy military hat there. The boy stands an aging man with an old rifle in his wrinkled hands. He looks at you mostly with concealed interest. Not concealed enough, apparently. I wonder whether it's attention that allows me to see more of that, or whether I'm just. It's, it'd be nice to do two sort of parallel playthroughs, I guess. If anyone does know the answer to that, just let me know in the comments. Hey, can I ask a few questions? Hey there, ask away, and I'll try and get you some answers. Well, wow, that is definitely not a Russian accent, Jesus Christ. Uh, what are you guarding? It's Villa's treasury. Keep the taxes and get here and use them for the common good. And if you got any funny ideas, my friend, I don't recommend trying them out. I may be old, but I'm a great shot. Well, I'm fairly sure I can beat you to death with my hands, judging from my skills. I mean, you no harm. Can I ask something else? Like what? Uh, tell me about yourself. What's there to tell? I'm, geez, I'm, I'm just going to switch back to normal, never mind. What's there to tell? I'm a simple man. The one thing that makes me special is my aim. I can hit a radioactive spider in the eye socket from 200 paces. Which one? That's right. I don't like to brag yet, uh-huh. But for many years now, I've won the local top marksman contest. Good for you, my man. Could you spare some more time? Like what? What's new around the village? Nah, all is well. For that head, there's no time to be lazy or so Wait, did I? Read that wrong? Uh, I guess nothing's new. Uh, he's a great man. I believe in him. A whole village believes in him, and his faith is what keeps us all together. Everything's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Seems rather odd, but oh well. Ah, I see. The TV's out of the treasury. I'm surprised they managed to get pictures. What is on it? Pictures of Ryan Hawks. Interesting. I guess I'm not going to be able to loot these houses, which is probably for the best. No idea what this plan. Ah, I assume this is the weapons dealer or the general good stuff. Before you stands a thin, middle-aged man. His bony face blooms with a slightly forced smile when he notices you. Good day, good day. For your perusal, guns of all kinds. Pre-war, hot off the workbench. Rifles, shotguns, pistols from the best gunsmiths of the waste. All my weapons are of highest quality. If it explodes in your hands, your money back guaranteed. Ooh, can I? I wonder whether that means I get to check, or whether I've already passed up because my barter skill's high enough. Let's have a look. Yep, it's a check. Sorry, friend, my prices are already the best in the waste. If you don't want to buy anything, then don't. But I can't slash my prices any further. Too bad. Well worth a try. I'd like to see your wares. Let's see what he sells. Hmm. I don't have any electrical tape, so I still can't make that shiv. 21 rubles for a log. Jesus. It's like seven times what I'm selling it for. Babushka scarf. No weapons, but he's got some rounds, but only seven. I wonder whether that means that ammunition is going to be relatively rare in this game. I'd hope not. What, he just sells rubles? Is that just the stock? Hmm. And soap. 
right. I don't know what that is. Let's have a look. It's quite a nice cell they got here, I guess. And that's the oak tree, I assume. Not too good looking right now. So looks to the barkeep. <laughs> he looks like a happy chap. Before you stands a plump, red-faced man, aged around 25. He's wearing a white shirt and some rather short shorts. That's concerning. Just because it's probably very cold out. He has a well-kept beard. In his hands, there's a clean towel used to swat annoying flies. Upon seeing you, the man gives you a wide smile. Oh, a customer. Welcome to the tavern. You travellers sure keep on coming. What do you mean? Well, you're here right now. Not long ago, a band of armed people came through the village. People with guns usually mean trouble around these parts. But they're pretty civil, just like real army men. Hmm. Can you tell me more? Not much to tell. They weren't chatty. Our village head wanted to speak to them about some issue, but they just left. I don't think he struck any deal with them. They talked to our gate guard more than anyone else. His name's Yan. If you're interested in knowing about those guys, I suggest you speak to him. Yeah. Anyway, maybe you need a drink or some food? Are there any jobs you might need me for? You know, you better talk to my sister about that. I'm a simple-minded guy myself. I can sell you beer, I can sell you some spirits. That I would do gladly. Need something done around the house? A light bulb screwed or a chair fix, for example? Just give me a call. But more serious stuff is for Catch's ears. She's the proactive one. He looks at a young lady who seems lost in some calculations. It's just that she's pretty busy right now. Tallying the expenses, planning the budget, you know. And when Catch is busy, it's honestly pretty hard to get her attention. Oh, but I just thought of something. You know what she loves? Making all sorts of potions, tinctures, and spirits. That's what. I can't really understand why, but she's into that chemistry stuff. I come up to her and tell her that I sent you to try out her latest tincture. That way you'll get a free drink and also get to chat with her about stuff. Sly, huh? Pretty clever, me thinks. I'm not entirely sure whether trying random herbal men that me me melodies? Remedies is very good, but oh well, I'll give it a go, I guess. Thanks for your advice. I'm let me have a look at the menu. Where raw meat is not the best diet for a human, so you can cook stuff, I take it then. Uh, Pre-war vodka. It seems to do too much. Reduces intellect. Yep, typical. Oops, wrong thing. That's a vodka. Oh, vodka reduces radiation by 150. I wonder what the cap is on radiation. Uh, cassette tapes. Interesting. But not as interesting enough, and nor do I have the money to buy anything right now. Thanks, can I ask some more questions first? A pleasure, ask away. How'd you like working around here? Not too bad. Great, even. Yes, it's pretty great. <laughs> a simple job, but well respected by the people, for obvious reasons. If there's a party of some sort, there's a celebration due, or maybe even a burial, or simply a day off your job, who's there to pour you a fine glass of your favourite poison? That's me, and that's why I'm liked by the people. Barky smiles warmly and pats himself on the belly. <laughs> and there's money in it too. Yep, me and my sis were like, what's it called in the West? Independent entrepreneurs. Well, she's much more entrepreneurial than me because she does all the paperwork, but still. So yeah, definitely does sound like that. Oh, he's wearing a Soviet Union, he's at the CCCP, but obviously it hasn't lasted too long. I like all the propaganda posters on the wall. Tell me about yourself. What's there to tell? Me and Katya, yeah, we're local and we don't get out too much but I don't have anything against that. I like it, working here as a bartender. That's my job, and Catch's job is to keep the establishment from falling apart with her accounting skills. See, even now she's sitting over there with some documents, totally ignoring the world around her. That's okay, what would we do without her accounting? I don't even want to think about the job I'd have done. <laughs> Thank you, Coke. Get to answer any more questions. How is life out here? How's life, huh? People here are more or less civil, and the living itself? Well, we don't suffer from hunger or sudden changes. To some it sounds boring, but I really like it. I only ever change one thing about this place. When we inherited this dining hall, I started calling it a tavern instead. Oh, maybe that word is on the outside then. It's a great word, tavern. Kinda cozy, right? The old name was Labourer Dining Hall, food for workers. Those are the words of the old world. And me and Katya, we didn't see much of it. I guess that is a point. 19 years is a long time. Quite the innovator. Can I ask you something else? Uh, I'll have to gossip later, I guess. Let's just see what I can do so far. No more questions from me. That one takes a few more shots of the flies to this town and smiles at you. Nope. Better go. Hold on, friend. Maybe you'd like to hear a little business for us first. Aha. Uh -huh, so he is a bit of a businessman. Well, let's hear it. 
The math is pretty simple. A small job, really. What I need for you is to bring me this book I ordered. It's all the way in Krasnoy Nameni. Krasnoy... Krasnoy Nameni, I guess? Uh, Abraham, the local bookseller, has it at his store. I can't go and get it myself because of all the work around the bar. But I see that you travel a lot, so if you ever find yourself in Krasnoy Nameni, maybe you can pick it up for me, and on return, I'll compensate you for your trouble. Uh, what's the book about? Oh, you see? There was this writer named Tolkien, who lived in England, which was a country way back before the war. And he, well, he kind of wrote fairy tales for adults. You know, I should probably call it science fiction. Or not, I'm not too good with genres. Doesn't matter, the book's about another world. Anywho, I always love reading books, especially if they're about something extraordinary, something fantastic. Whether it's robots, and rings of Saturn, and ancient Greek myths, and all that kind of stuff. And then I was told that this Abraham in Krasnosnam... Jesus! Krasnos the many, it can get me this Tolkien's book. And with a special translation, too. Anyway, I drove to the city and ordered it. But now that it's here, I can't find time to go back and pick it up. I haven't seen any cars here, that's interesting. At least not in that look in workable condition. And with special trans... Oh, yep, yeah, I've already read that. Uh, it's a deal. If I ever get to Krasnos the many, I'll visit this Abraham character. Man takes your map and marks the city with a cross. Wow, thank you so much. Here's the receipt for the book. Just show it to Abram and he'll give it to you. Send a hand to a small square of thick paper. On it, written in formidable cursive, are the words, The owner of this document, Radchenko VA, or his legal proxy, may obtain a, a copy of Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, translated to Russian by uh, Bobia Z.A. after handing over this receipt, signed by Merkin A.D. Hmm. I hope he has a copy of this, just in case I get killed out in the wilderness, but still. As soon as I'm pretty much naked, with nothing but a jumper and a few bricks to my name, I may be kinda screwed. Well, I guess I can try and give people a good kick in. Anywho, I think that's where I'm gonna call it for this episode, so have a good one, and I'll catch you on the rebound.